Okay, the next vital piece you'll be getting for your computer is the RAM. Also um, said as random access memory. It's been stated uh, in the past that the more RAM you have, the faster your computer you have. That's really not true anymore. For a general user, um, for just web browsing and stuff, four, gig four gigabytes is seriously all you need. Like if you pay, if you get more RAM than four gigabytes, you're wasting your money. If you're just um, web browsing, I mean, some photo editing, uh, there's some some game, uh, most games even, like only like newest games would like need more than that. Uh, like there's not much like the only thing I can't do on four gigs of RAM on my computer is edit really long 1080p videos. Everything else I can do. So. There's, uh, I got, I upped my computer before to 6, and then recently my extra 2 gigabytes died in my computer, so now I'm back to 4. And it was, um, I had had problems with my, um, I think Adobe Premiere or whatever, I had memory leaks. And yeah, but to get on to what we were going to talk about, <laughs> the desktop memory is what we're going to be looking at. You have Flash memory, laptop memory, Mac memory, server memory, so just different types, USB flash drives, card readers, blah blah blah. What we're looking at is desktop memory since we are building a desktop. Like I said, and everything else, try not to look at brand. You obviously have the top brands. Like, most of these are good. You can kind of tell like what RAM is good by just looking at it. If it looks good, like all these look kind of pretty cool. Like, cool designs, have a slick uh, heat sink on them. I mean, they're probably good quality RAM. Like, something like this, is some basic green stuff, I mean, you don't want that in a hiring computer. A basic, uh, um, a basic office computer is perfect. It's all the RAM you need. You don't need any fancy high-speed RAM. Just basic stuff would be fine, as long as it has a good rating. You gotta remember about the good rating. Because a lot of RAM has a, some companies have RAM that has a tendency to die um, prematurely or it might be dead on arrival. So make sure you get that in there. Um, the three types of RAM: DDR, DDR2, and DDR3 out right now. Um, DDR was is really old now, and you I don't know if you can even buy it on Newegg anymore. Uh, yes, you can. And even you can buy SD RAM, which is even older. So I want to worry about um, DDR and DDR2 RAM, which they do have still in New Egg. It's gone up in price since no one really needs it anymore as much, and the demand's down. So they've gone up in price, and then DDR3 has gone down in price a lot. So DDR3 is a lot cheaper, and that's another reason why you would want a newer motherboard and everything. Instead of one of the really old ones, you can hardly get anyway anymore. And so um, we're just gonna look at DDR3, for instance. This is um, also gonna make a decision, kind of what motherboard you get. Most like this 1600, like should work with almost any. Like you want to make sure it should say on the motherboard page, whatever one you decide to choose, what RAM is compatible. Um, it doesn't mean it necessarily won't work if this says 1600 and it says compatible with 1333. It's just, there's a chance it could work, it doesn't mean it will. Uh, the Usually the manufacturer's sites on the motherboard give you memory that's um, compatible. And that list usually isn't always correct. Uh, usually what's listed works, um, but it doesn't mean what's not listed doesn't work. So... Uh, typically, like, I, I just don't understand why they put those, because it skews the consumer in thinking, like, well, this RAM's not going to work, I want this RAM, but what happens if it doesn't work? Then I just wasted my money, or I have to pay money to return it. But, I mean, as you can see, these have thousands and thousands, well, thousands of reviews of all these different types of RAMs, and I, I'm pretty sure they work in almost every motherboard. Except for very specific, like probably even the, uh, probably the cheap ones are stupid like that that won't support it, or something like that. Speeds. Um, then break another thing. I've looked up enough benchmarks that if you're building the fastest computer you're trying to ever possibly build, 
Hey, maybe you want the fastest speed. DDR3 2800. It's probably really expensive too, yeah. 16 gigabytes is $600. A little bit much, in my opinion. <laughs> Another thing you need to look at is CAS latency. The lower the latency, the faster the RAM. That's mainly if you see timing, that's part of your latency 99924, like here. The first one is your most important, second is kind of important, not as much. And as you get to the right, it's less important of a number. Uh, the, the first one is your most important to look at. The lower that is, the higher the perform performance. Because it's possible if you have a 1333 MHz uh, cast latency of 8, it could be as fast as a um, DDR3-1600 with a cast latency of 9. So you're gonna, you have to look at that, or there's even a chance the slower RAM with the 1333 with an 8 could be faster than the 1600. Um, it's very, it's very minuscule difference, like you're talking like a few percentile difference, probably. Um, but it's always worth looking into, like, typically if you're just building a, a just a regular computer, gaming computer, 1600, because it's typically the cheapest here. It's even 1600 right here is. Well, that's an 8 gig. Okay. Well, that's 8 gigs. So, 8 gigs versus 8 gig, you're talking. 1600 is $3 more. And maybe. It probably is worth. I don't know if, how much performance. It's probably give you enough to justify $3 to get the 1600. But what that also allows you to do is overclock more as well. So, um, if you're going to be doing that, you probably want the faster RAM. 1600, is, I think, is ideal for, like, any computer. If you're really trying to save money, you get the 1333. It's not going to hurt any. Uh, unless, um, unless, of course, you um, are trying to get that high in overclock or something, then it's not worth skimping on the slower RAM. Um, what else is there on RAM? Uh, uh, not entirely sure. Um, well, it's channels. Uh, channel memory. Uh, there is single channel, dual channel, triple channel, and quad channel memory now. Um, uh, double dual channel is your most common memory. Single channel, I don't sure. If you can still have it, I guess, but it's not. I mean, you never see it anymore. Typically, that'd be like one stick of RAM alone in your computer, like one four gig stick, which is. I mean, it's fine, but uh, for certain applications, it's faster to have two. Um, then you have a second stick of RAM um, that would make a dual channel. As long as your motherboard supports it, that's a big deal. Most motherboards only support dual channel. But then you have some of the older Intel motherboards that support triple channel memory. And the X58 platform, I think, was the only one that supported triple uh, not a hundred percent sure, uh, and the X seventy nine I think is the only the newest Intel chipset is the only one that supports quad channel memory, and what that means to get the most performance you want to at least four sticks of RAM, and typically in those the cheaper X seventy nines only have four DIMM slots, which is the amount of slots that RAM can be put into, but on the higher end you can have even eight slots, so you can have up to like eight four gigabyte sticks so or even more than that so you can have over 32 gigs of ram the only reason you would ever need that much ram is like uh, super like video encoding like media processing there's no reason like the average consumer eight gigs is overkill for the average consumer considerably but if you're gonna gonna play games i mean you might as well spend like five dollars more double your ram or something like that and it'll be more future proof that way. So in case like programs start using more memory or you want to run more stuff at once or you decide, oh I want to try video editing, you'll have enough RAM to do so. Um like I said with the quad channel you can like go here. My next computer is probably gonna be quad channel memory whenever that happens sometime down the road. And so I will probably get sixteen times four. Like myself since I've used over 8 gigs like once before so I was like why not just get the 16 it's like might as well just get it and it'll be done like 
Otherwise, eight gigs is hard to use. Like I was running a like a lot of programs all at once, and like Photoshop was using like three gigs, and I was using like something else at the same time. Um, so it used a lot of RAM, and it could help. Uh, like that. Uh, see, the latency is nine. You got a best rating, which is that sometimes best rating is not always the best. I mean. Good rated, so you know you're probably going to get a uh, good quality RAM, but it's not always the the best speed and everything else. Like this one is, well, 1333, but when he's uh, 777 time timing, it's kind of have to look at it. Like this quad channel kit has an XMP stream pro multi profile. No, I forgot what that means. So like it's a stream profile, it's a profile. Uh, memory profile that cert only certain motherboards can access and it enhances performance pretty much enhances the performance so this is a 2133 megahertz ram at the same nine latency which so that's considerably faster than 1600 also costs uh, at least about 35 dollars more for that so i mean if you want like one or two at most frames per second like more in a video game, spend the extra thirty-five dollars. It's really not cost-effective at all. But if you just have to have top-of-the-line performance, go for it. Uh, I think that's all I have to say on RAM. If you have any questions, like again, just comment below, like this video, subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for watching, and continue on to the next video.